Okay, so today I was challenged by a gal said she wanted to use a calendar, a picture from a calendar to do some decoupaging. And I thought, well, just thin out the picture if it's too thick. She was worried about it being too thick and not going around the edges very well. And so this is going to be my challenge for today. So here's my calendar piece that I cut out. My wife's calendar upstairs. Don't worry, it's January, so she's not going to mind too much. What we'll do is we'll cut out these pictures right here. And we'll give these a try. Now I'm going to do this in real time so that you have an idea of what it actually takes to do it. I've already, I've already taken some plastic uh, cling wrap and wrapped it around this piece of plastic, corrugated plastic to work on. This will make it easier to lift the image off of there once we're done thinning out the paper. And what I'm going to do next is take some sandpaper, um, 150 grit it looks like, and I'm going to scuff because this side of the paper is shiny and it's like going to seal. You're not going to be able to get water past it unless you scuff it. Remove the seal basically of the clear coat that's on there. And I tried it earlier on a little piece and it made a huge difference. It was really hard to peel because the water just wouldn't soak into the into that clear coat that's on the paper. Just scuff it. Break the surface tension. That should be good. So, take your image and you'll want to coat it with Mod Podge. Put a nice even coat on it. You want to get two coats total. Let it dry in between coats. It's going to get noisy. I'm going to turn the blow dryer on. So we'll put two coats on here and then we'll flip it over with the image facing the plastic and we'll put a little drop of water on there. Once the water soaks into the paper, the paper will start to roll off and the Mod Podge will act as a clear coat to protect the image. Now this one I, I coated earlier, I put two coats on this. We can go ahead and play with this while that's working. Sorry for the noise, but I want you to be able to see how long it actually takes. Scuff it, scuff the back. Now this has got the two coats of Mod Podge already on it. And we'll put this on the saran. A little drip of water on there. So too much water. Now you want to make sure that you don't get Mod Podge on the back where you sanded it because otherwise it'll make it nearly impossible. See how the paints of the uh, water is soaking into the paper wherever we scratched it through to that uh, coating. Just let it soak in a little bit. I'm actually ready to put another layer of Mod Podge on, on this one. Dries pretty quickly. You want to make sure you cover it because wherever you don't cover it, it's going to be unprotected and you'll burn right through it when you go to remove the thin, thin the paper out. You know, see how this is soaking in in the paper? It's working really well. Get more water on there. We'll start in the middle and slowly work our way out. Oh, there it goes. Starting to start paper starting to roll. See the little rolls of paper? And a lot of times what I'll do is I'll take a, a paintbrush, um, one like this, and I'll use that to slowly 
roll the paper off. Sometimes if you get too aggressive with your finger, it'll it'll tear too easily. A little opening. This would be pretty tedious to do on a large piece, but if you don't have access to a printer to, to scan your or print your images, this would be the next best thing. This will make the image almost as thin as tissue paper. Probably could have sanded the image a little bit more. Oops, see it's starting to roll. There we go. It's starting to roll off to the rolls. You can see the image coming through behind there. In this case was a picture of a bunch of people on a beach. It takes a little bit of patience and practice. Because like I said, you are dealing with something that's Literally, tissue paper thin is what's left behind, along with two thin layers of Mod Podge that's keeping everything together. If you want, you can, when you're done doing this, you can either paint the back of this image with some white chalk paint, or if you're going to put it on a, on a box or on a on a piece of wood or something, you could paint that wood white and it would really make these colors that are on here really make them pop and stand out. Paper's rolling off gently, just as I wanted it to. Now, if you would have gotten Mod Podge on the back part, it would have been nearly impossible to peel it off wherever the Mod Podge was on the other side or on this side I should say in the back and it's peeling quite nicely perfect This would wrap around a stone real well, or around corners or circles. It would be nice and thin. Now the other reason we wrap the, the cling wrap and work on that is because the Mod Podge would stick to your workstation when it dries. And this makes it so much easier to lift off once it's dried. Kind of see where the white is, so there's still a bit of paper. See your image coming through. Just keep working it like that, and there you go. You have a tissue thin piece of uh, calendar board, whereas before it was so thick you could barely even use it. Stick that under the blow dryer for a moment. Let it dry. Still see that? Keep an eye on that while I work with this. So here's our piece that we worked on. Already sanded the edge or the back, so it broke the surface. I could feel I got a little bit of Mod Podge on the back, so this may not peel out 100%. So uh, let this piece air dry here for a moment. Not so noisy. We'll put a little bit of water on here. Let it start to soak. I 
I said before, you got to make sure you scuff it, scuff this back side with sandpaper. There we go, starting to break, break free. Now you'll really start to see the image pop from behind here when, when this rolls back the layers. The first piece wasn't the greatest example. See the colored ink coming off. Your layer of paper from the back. Now this won't work with a with a well. This won't work with a photograph, just because of the way the paper is made. But you can do this process with inkjet or laser jet printed paper. However, the inkjet doesn't work as well. It's more of a washed out, a little bit more of a washed out color. It looks more like a lead pencil. See how nicely this is coming off? And what's left behind here is just tissue paper, thin piece of paper, and that two layers of Mod Podge that I applied to the paper. That's all that's left there, keeping this whole thing together. Just keep rolling it. Oh, it's rolling really nice. Really nice. Look at that. Nice big piece. Awesome. It's working out really well. You gotta be careful not to burn through the image with your sandpaper when you're scuffing it, obviously. Never use like a power sander, just scuff it by hand. Oh man, this turned out really nice. You can see all three of the images right through the paper. That is exactly the look that you want. See very little paper left behind. It's mostly just ink and uh, and Mod Posh is what you're looking at right there with a real thin layer, be even thinner than a piece of a one ply piece of tissue paper. And your colors are going to be nice and bright on the other side because it's protected by the Mod Podge. Now it's cloudy because it's wet. Once it dries, once the back part dries, this will be clear as can be. Alright, let me put this off to the side. Put it on a blow dryer for a few seconds. Now, getting back to using um, an inkjet image, if you have a inkjet printed picture, like let's say you print it out on your inkjet printer, you take the paper, just like this, put it in your oven, in your cooking oven, in the middle shelf, 300 degrees for 10 minutes and cook the paper. What happens is, is it sets your ink and hardens it, cures it. And then the next step is taking Mod Podge and putting a coat on, let it dry, put another coat on, let it dry, and then you can proceed to peel the paper the same way if you want, or you can actually use it to do an image transfer. Um, and that's covered in another video that I have, but um, don't count your inkjet out. You can you can still use it. In fact, normally, if you take an inkjet image and you spray it with hairspray, sometimes it gets blotchy unless you cure it or let it sit like 24 hours. But now this was this was cooked in the oven, and literally, I can take the Mod Podge and brush it on there, and there's no smearing at all. It's color fast and it'll dry really clear without smearing or being blotchy at all. If you've ever tried spraying with hairspray, if you sprayed it with hairspray right out of the printer, it would just be all runny and blotchy and it would look terrible. Of course, it's never gonna be as clear as if you print it with a laser jet printer. Um, images are always much, much better to work with a laser this is to show you this is a inkjet and this is a laser much sharper 
defined uh, lines and the colors are way better if you have a laser jet printer to work with. But see how nicely that's drying, nice and clear. You would put on another, another layer and you could basically do the same thing as this. You could create a tissue paper using a photo that you printed on your copy machine or on your printer at home. And then you could decoupage with it. You'll see how this is drying real nicely. It lifted right off of there. Of course, the side's wet from sitting. This gives you a better idea for color. It's still a little bit cloudy, but as that Mod Podge dries, it'll dry really clear. And, and this is just super thin and super nice to work with for decoupaging. So that's how you thin out thick paper. You can always go back even if, you, if it's not thin enough for you. You can go back and, and thin it out some more. Um, or if you, if, if you re reduce the paper even more, make it more transparent, you can brush a light coating of white chalk paint and it'll help make the colors pop like they are right now. But as it sits right now, you could easily, easily apply these to rock or wood or or whatever you want and it'll it'll easily conform real well for you so hope you enjoyed that uh, tutorial